So here we have an animation of what happens when we run a direct current across an armature using a set of brushes. So in this case, the brushes will be connecting the external current to the split ring commutator at this point and at this point, right? So we can see that the direct current is transmitted into the coil. We've seen an animation quite similar to this before. So what happens? Well, as we can see, the motor effect causes an upward force to act on the right side of the coil and a downward force to act on the left side of the coil. And this pulls the coil into a vertical position. Right? We can figure out that it must rotate because there's a torque acting on it. The torque from the left side of the coil and the torque from the right side of the coil is identical and in the same direction. Right? So it gets all the way up to a vertical position. But what will happen after this? What's happening to the brushes as they go over the split ring commutator? Well, once the commutator reaches the vertical position, the split in it is what's connected to the external current, right? So as the coil reaches its vertical position, the brushes lose contact with the commutator. That means that just as it gets to its vertical position, there is no current running through the armature and it stops experiencing a force. But that won't stop the armature from turning, will it? It'll, its momentum will sort of carry it on. It will go a little bit further than its vertical position. Now at this point, the external current will connect to the other side of the splittering commutator. So what will that mean for the forces on the armature? Well, let's take a look. We can see from this animation here that when the coil turns further than the vertical position, then the external, con uh, the external current coming the other way through the split ring commutator will change the forces that are acting on the coil. So the brushes are now in contact with the opposite terminals of the armature. And you can see that every time the coil reaches its vertical position and the split of the split ring passes over the external current, the current in the armature will change direction, right? You can see that the arrows suddenly change direction at this point. So the new torque uh, that's produced by the external current connecting to the other side of the split ring commutator will be in the same direction as the original torque. In this case, it will be anti-clockwise. Can you see how that works? When the current reverses, it means that the left side is once again experiencing a downward force, and the right side is once again experiencing an upward force. Right? So it, it's always moving in the same direction. This means that now we have a coil that is constantly rotating as long as we can supply it with a constant supply of electrical energy. In other words, we have a motor. So the split ring commutator allows the armature to rotate continuously. So the finished motor will continuously take electrical energy that you put into it in the form of electrical current and turn it into kinetic energy which is the rotational energy of the armature. Remember that if the armature is connected to an axle, it will be turning that axle as well. The axle can then in turn uh, rotate different parts of machinery. So how do we maximize the power of a motor? Well, all we need to do is maximize the torque, right? So how do we do that? We've learned a little bit about torque before and what affects it. And so we should be able to make some pretty good guesses at how we can increase the strength of the motor. We can increase the area of the coil. That is, make the coil longer or wider or both. We can increase the current in the coil. So that's the amount of electrical current passing through it. We can increase the magnetic field strength that moves across the coil because this will create a greater motor force. Or we can increase the number of loops in the coil. All of these are, of course, 
represented in our equation for torque. Tau equals N, the number of loops, B, the magnetic field, I, the current in the coil, and A, the area of the coil. There's also a cosine theta, but of course if the motor is rotating, the cosine theta will be constantly changing. So we can see that the equation reflects all the ways that we can increase the strength of the motor.